Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright, as hair consultant, audiologist and director of Clearax. Thank you for joining me in my latest video using the iClearscope Endoscope. And this is part two of a video that I uploaded um, last week. Um, this patient attended with bilateral otitis externa and I suspected that this infection is candida, which is a fungal infection of the ear, also known as otomycosis. And um, I post-procedure, I've written to this patient's GP. And the reason why I'm just outlining this now is there's a few comments um, asking what the next step was. I thought I mentioned it in the video, but perhaps I forgot. But of course, this patient needs medication, but I've asked their GP to take a swab first, just to confirm whether it is a bacterial or a fungal infection, because quite often uh, what I'm kind of noticing is when patients attend with ear infections, um, commonly they always prescribed with antibiotics despite it being a fungal infection and if you have got a fungal infection and you're taking antibiotics it's only going to uh, make your fungal infection worse so this patient most certainly needs uh, medication but I've requested their GP to take a swab analysis first. Uh, there was another comment is uh, because the, wax, oh, the debris was quite mushy uh, was it possible to use water to wash it out. You want to avoid water, particularly when an ear is infected. In fact, water can cause an ear infection, i.e. the term swimmer's ear. Uh, so water increases the pH level of the ear, so the ear should be mildly acidic, uh, but water can increase the pH level to a more neutral pH or even sometimes an alkaline um, pH. And that can um, provide the perfect breeding environment for more pathogenic bacteria, for example. Uh, fungi and bacteria obviously love warm, moist, damp conditions. Also, water can leach away natural wax that's lining the ear canal, which protects the underlying skin. And water itself can harbour harmful um, bacteria like um, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, for example. So, but Particularly when a patient has got an ear infection already, you want to, you, you most certainly do not want to use water because you're just going to make that worse. Now, this patient's got a lo lot of crusted dead skin directly on the eardrum, so I'm just tackling that straight away. I've taken a peel some away. Um, so again, just approaching the eardrum. I think I'm using the 17 or 16 gauge. I'm not, I think it might be the 17 gauge. And I'm just trying to peel the skin left to right, but I've got to be wary of the canal wall to the right, you can see there, I'm just going to make sure I'm not making really um, strong contact with them because that will be uncomfortable. But what I'm going to do in a moment, I'm going to go towards the top part of the ear canal and peel, this, or actually I think it's on the back part of the ear canal, and peel the skin towards the eardrum and then eventually off the eardrum. You may have noticed that the, the pinna, also known as the auricle, so the cartilage we have on either side of our ears, it was also the same in this patient's left ear. It's really dry and cracked, and it's possible this patient has got psoriasis um, of the pinna. So they have previously been prescribed some medication for that, um, but there's not really much improvement. So again, just ask the GP to um, have a look at that. So we peel some of the skin off the back part of the ear canal. You can see there's a few hairs there. I think I mentioned in their last video, there was a, uh, in their left ear, they had a few hairs also after a haircut. So I've just asked the patient to position some cotton wool just at the entrance of the ear, not in, just to create a seal so the hairs can't go in. And I'm slowly now peeling this crusted layer of skin. It's crusted, but it's also quite sticky. Uh, it's got a kind of a dual consistency. And I'm just right at the roof of the ear canal, probably a, a millimetre away from the eardrum, if that. And I just want to peel this down and away. And it's unbelievable how much difference this makes to this made to the patient's hearing. So we know the eardrum's there, it's partially visible, but this layer of skin is probably the same thickness, if not more, than the eardrum itself. It's probably actually thicker than the eardrum itself. So it's you're thickening your eardrum with all this crusted skin so by peeling it the underlying eardrum is then exposed it's more mobile when sound waves hit the eardrum it's going to vibrate much more and these vibrations are transmitted to the three middle ear bones the ossicle ossicle sorry uh, the first middle ear bone is called the malleus it's also known as the hammer bone then you've got the second middle ear bone known as the anvil or the medical term is the incus and last but not least you've got the stirrup which is medically known as the stay piece now, the stapes is the smallest bone in the human body, and that's connected to the cochlea. 
Now the cochlea is full of fluid and tens of thousands of sensory um, hair cells. So when that stapes bone moves backwards and forwards, it causes um, hydraulic motion of the fluid contained within the cochlea. And this fluid travels in wave depending upon the frequency. So if it's a high frequency sound, the waves of the fluid is um, the, um, the peaks and troughs are quite shallow. Um, so the, <coughs> the, the wavelength, should I say, and if it's a low frequency sound, the wavelength, um, the peaks and troughs are a lot longer. And depending upon the frequency of sound is where you then get searing, we call it, of the hair cells. So they move side to side, but they also contract. And when they sear side to side and when they contract, they produce a, an action potential, which is basically a surge of electricity which travels up the auditory nerve, so the eighth um, uh, cranial nerve, um, and that goes to the brain, um, to the auditory cortex, where it's processed as sound. So I'm now just using the forceps to peel this skin away, which worked really, really well. And again, you can just see how dry and cracked the outer ear is. And there's still quite a lot of skin here to remove. They were right up close and personal with the patient's ear and they were just going to be careful. I think there might just be a tad more skin that we need to remove. Let's have a look. Yeah, we've just got a little bit left. I think I'm going to have to use the suction here. Um, using forceps here would be too close to the eardrum, the tip of the forceps. They are slightly curved, but because they're, they're so small, they're kind of a bit pointed as well, and that'll just poke into the eardrum. So just using, this is definitely the 17 gauge. And I'm peeling from top left to bottom right. I think I've got a hold of most of it there. So we're just gonna re-enter. This is a bit of mushy debris or dead skin at the base, so we're just going to clear that away. And now I'm just going to hover over the canal wall. There's a bit of skin, debris here, a bit of otteries, a discharge, so I'm just going to hover over, get as much out as I can. Again, there's only so much you can remove. We could be literally spending all day trying to remove every little last um, flake and inch of this, but uh, when we're working in a, in a two thousand year canal in particular, we're going to be very, very careful because it is very sensitive. And I've said that a million times in my videos. So if you've been watching me for a while, uh, you're probably sick and tired of me saying that, but it's true. Um, when we're cleaning the ear, yes, ideally you want all the wax to come out in one plug. Having said that, a bit of wax is good for us. It's there. It serves a purpose. Um, wax is mildly acidic, so the acidity helps to inhibit harmful bacterial growth. Wax is oily and greasy, so it helps to moisturize the skin lining the ear canal. Um, the acidity, going back to the acidity of wax, is believed to be a natural insect repellent for the ear as well. And ear wax by nature is sticky, so any dirt, foreign bodies, particles that enter the ear, it sticks to the wax. And for the majority of us, I would say 90 to 93% of the population, there or thereabouts, the wax comes out naturally, it's self cleansing. Now, of course, this is not really wax, this is dead skin is an infection so just quite near the entrance at the base just there's a bit of skin here a bit of dampness and again i'm just kissing the surface although we're on the cartilage region i'm still going to be careful when you've got in an infected ear as well the ear is a bit more inflamed so it's more easily prone to lacerations and by lacerating the ear canal we're probably just going to make the infection worse so and these hairs don't help, they're quite sticky, they're matted. So this patient is prone to uh, ear infections. And again, if it's chronic otitis externa, it's more likely to be uh, otomycosis. Uh, this patient didn't experience any pain, no otalgia. It's mainly itchiness and dryness of the ear canal, uh, which is again a hallmark of otomycosis. With bacterial infections, generally you get edema, swelling, erythema, or redness, although you can get erythema with fungal, but you normally get a lot more otorrhea. 
uh, pain otologists say one of the bedside tests i did mention it in my previous video of their left ear one of the bedside tests is to push the pinna um, the tragus sorry or retract the pinna if that's a bit uncomfortable it's possible that more possible that the patient's got a bacterial infection there's just a bit of skin on the anterior medial canal wall so anterior is the front part of the ear canal medial is towards the eardrum if i say lateral it's more towards the entrance i think i'm just going to use a smaller suction tip i think that's a 16 gauge i do manage to get most of it so the eardrum is is a bit dull uh, there is an infection of course but it is fully visible now so the patient could hear really really well Difficult part of the ear to get access to the anterior recess. But I'm happy with that. Hope you guys are too. So he says. Well, the patient was, that was the main thing. And I shared the video by airdrop, so they, they do follow me on Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube, I believe. So, well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.